Whenever I come to do the loving kindness meditations or whenever I share about it, I always end up saying how I believe that metta practice is like playing jazz. You have to keep improvising to make it alive for yourself. If you've ever had the practice of just doing the traditional phrases over and over, you may know how how kind of gray it becomes. You know, may you be happy, may you know peace, may you be free from suffering. You know, it becomes automatic. And the idea of of really training your attention on on the Brahma Viharas, on these immeasurable states, it's not an intellectual practice. It's about really engaging energetically into the practice. I learned um, Transcendental Meditation when I was 15 and I've been practicing meditation ever since. And at one point I realized that that much of my um, spiritual practice career was about chasing lights and rainbows. I was looking for the exalted states and trying to move as quickly as I could through the unpleasant states and through the hindrances. And, and after a while, my practice began to mature and to recognize that this practice is about, about reality. It's about seeing what's real. And often in this practice, we are encouraged whenever you encounter something that is challenging or difficult, to really pause and to let it know it, see it, and then, and then to have tea with it, to really investigate what's stuck, what's, what's between you and feeling free, what's between you and feeling joy, as Anam was referring to last night. And so you can learn these incredible skills to, to get familiar with what's between you and feeling happy. And something the, the Buddha said and that familiarity leads to wisdom. So as you get familiar with, with the hindrances and the challenges and the blocks that show up, familiarity and wisdom will begin to flow. But sometimes in our practice, we be can become more fixated on what's wrong. It becomes not so much about freedom from suffering, but the suffering itself. And it's said that in this practice, as you open to the experience of reality, that you come to know intimately the 10,000 joys and the 10,000 sorrows of this life. And perhaps to be awake is to be awake to the 10,000 joys and the 10,000 sorrows. So just as there is a temptation to chase lights and rainbows, and there can be a temptation to focus just what's between you and feeling happy, you're suffering. It's really helpful to, to spend time to increase your capacity for joy and to increase your capacity for kindness, to increase your capacity for compassion and equanimity. So I wanted to share a little bit um, this afternoon on some of the, the elements that, that go into really learning how to look for the good and, and really increase your capacity to experience that. And I'd like to leave a little experience exploring one aspect of, of joy, of sympathetic joy, of learning how to see and really feel the joy that others feel. And then to explore a little bit toward the end, um, an embodied practice of really bringing gratitude and metta to the body. My friend Rick Hansen, who wrote the book Buddha's Brain, has talked a lot about the, the neuroplasticity of your brain. Where the attention goes, the energy flows. You know, the neurons that fire together, wire together. So just as when we have the natural traumatic events that occur in life, the more we stream attention to that, the more that can get fused. But at the same time, when you bring your attention to compassion or joy or kindness and you stream energy toward that, you're also changing the neuroplasticity of your brain and you're increasing your capacity for, 
for these states, to be able to open and receive to these, these states when they're there. So he has a few things I wanted to share with you about some of the ways that you can really help your neurons fire together when you are exploring wholesome states. The first is to, when you're feeling this inner experience of joy or compassion or kindness or love, the first is to really explore the duration. Is it possible to really to stay with it and to allow it to be there and to lengthen in some way? And the second is to explore the intensity. When you're feeling joy, is it possible to let it get big? How big could joy get? Could it expand beyond a room? The third is to intimately feel it in your body. And as you feel it in the body, to look for what's new, what's different. Is there something maybe you hadn't noticed before about this experience of gratitude? Is there some new location that you can sense as you're reflecting and holding it in your awareness? It can be also helpful to focus on the personal relevance. Oftentimes that can bring it more, more alive in your life. Why is this feeling of gratitude important to you? And to let that sink in. And along those lines is really opening up your capacity to really receive. And when you are visited by a wholesome state, how intimately can you receive it? How intimately can you really take it in? And finally, there's an element about when you're experiencing a wholesome state to really explore what's enjoyable about it. One thing Rick says is that when you really focus on the enjoyment of a wholesome state, it heightens the flow of neuroepinephrine and dopamine. And again, it opens your receptivity, increases your capacity to really deeply feel it inside. So I'd like to talk a little bit about sympathetic joy, and then we'll do a little bit of exploration, and I'll, I'll do a little reminder of these, of these little awarenesses as you're, as you're doing your practice. So much of, of this practice is of coming awake, is really learning how to see self and other, and other and self particularly in relationship. Tara and I have a, a little, little game we play when we get into a conflict, which happens from time to time. Uh, our joke is the first one to do a role reversal wins. <laughs> as soon as I can move into her world and imagine what she's feeling and articulate that, it's over. The argument is over, or at least a, a, a bridge of healing begins. And you may have found that in the forgiveness practice, part of the key to forgiveness is your capacity to role reverse, to, to sense the suffering or, or the ignorance or the fear of the other and how they may have acted unskillfully. Your capacity to move into their experience can deeply inform you and help to bridge that sense of separation. One of the uh, experiences I've had, of course, is a number of us have colds and so forth, is when there's coughing in the room, of just remembering, I've been there too. Two years ago, that was me. Now it's your turn, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and the same thing comes with joy. Increasing your capacity for joy is about increasing your capacity to feel joy for others. And there's, there's a quality of, of pure joy that, that many of us have experienced. If you have a child or a niece or a nephew and, and you see them stand and walk for the first time, it's just this kind of explosion of well-being, explosion of happiness for them. Anyone you know and you deeply care for when they've had some success in life, there's just a spontaneous enlivening that occurs. But just as when you focus on compassion, you'll begin to realize where compassion isn't flowing, 
that's part of the metta practices as well. One of my best friends um, wrote me an email a little while ago. And he said, I just completed my latest book and I think it's the best one I've written. I felt no sympathetic joy. (laughs) What I felt was, what about my book? (laughs) That one that I never finished. (laughs) And suddenly it was, what about me? And so this practice of sympathetic joy can provide you with an edge. And of course, when I recognize that separation and I really reflected on it, it allowed me to become more self-aware and then really enter into his world and to be able to celebrate for him and with him after a while. (laughs) What I'd like to do in, in this practice is to, I'll be inviting you to settle and then to think of, of someone for whom sympathetic joy might come easily. It might be a child or an animal. It's always a great place to start. It might be a best friend. And to just to find something that they, some success or some joy that they felt and to allow yourself to resonate with that. And, and you might find your own words you know, may, may this joy widen and deepen. May your joy continue. And as you breathe, just to look for the resonance that you may feel inside. I'll then be inviting you to think of, of others and we'll have just a period of time for you to kind of go through your personal files and explore what it's like to open to this quality of sympathetic joy. So if you like, you can close your eyes. You might like to just take a few slow and full deep breaths. And you might sense on the out breath, just the quality of softening and arriving. You may notice how much more immediately and quickly your attention is drawn inside when you close your eyes. And in your own time, just bring into mind someone or something that you you find easy to love. And in your own way, let there be a reflection on something they may feel joy or excitement about in their life. And as you breathe, explore the resonance inside as you find your joy for their joy. I'll offer just a few questions. Can you stay with this experience inside? Is it possible to sustain it? Could you let this feeling get big? How intimately can you locate this inside? Is there anything new, anything different you sense as you breathe into this resonance of sympathetic joy? And why is this important to you? Why does this matter? Is it possible to more intimately receive this feeling, to find pleasure in it? Or 
over the next five minutes or so, let your attention move to others in your life. Exploring this felt sense inside. If it's helpful, you might bring your hand to your heart if that's helpful for you. Exploring this role reversal of celebrating joy. If the mind wanders, it gives refresh the practice. Can you sustain this feeling? How intimately can you locate the aliveness of this experience? Could you let it get big? Why does this matter to you? Is it possible to more intimately receive this feeling? Are there any words or phrase you might offer the other? May your happiness deepen and widen. In these remaining few minutes, you might refresh the practice. Looking for the good. And celebrating joy.
and now letting this practice, letting this technique completely fall away. And take a moment or two to relax and feel. Just feel the imprint, the cumulative effect of your practice. In your own time, you might gently deepen the breath. And if you like, you might open your eyes or you can remain with them closed. This practice of sympathetic joy is sensitizing ourselves to, to look for the good and to, to feel the good can be a powerful way of bridging a sense of separation between ourselves and others. And it can be kind of a natural way of, of looking out. There's another form of practice that, that I find helpful. It's very intimate. And it's in relationship to this body. Have you ever looked at your body in the mirror and had a negative comment? <laughs> Let me put that another way. <laughs> Have you ever looked in the mirror and thought, you are perfect? <laughs> we tend to hold our bodies in some form of mild to extreme contempt. <laughs> we tend to override the body. The body is constantly giving us little signals. You're working on, a, on the computer and the body gently says, I need to pee. And the mind says, we'll do it later. <laughs> You're looking forward to a wonderful meal. And the body gives you this faint signal saying, I have just achieved the perfect amount of nutrition. And the mind says, we haven't even looked at the dessert tray yet. <laughs> the mind tends to override the body. And this practice, of course, is about sensitizing ourselves to the body. So I'd like to offer a little loving kindness body scan. I once many years ago got very inspired about gratitude. So I thought I'm gonna do a gratitude list. And I'm gonna write 10 things I'm grateful for every night. But I'm not gonna repeat myself. It was very powerful for about three days. <laughs> And then I found myself just listing the body parts that didn't hurt, <laughs> which was in itself kind of a discovery. So what I would like to do is to just to offer this practice of just sensing the body through this lens of metta. And perhaps, again, we all need to improvise to make it feel alive. But one particular doorway is simply through gratitude just to reflect on how, what a faithful servant your body has been for you for these years. So as we move through different parts of the body, I'll just be offering some short inquiries to offer a sense of, of gratitude or appreciation, or you might visualize a sense of warmth or light. Let yourself improvise to find a way just to connect to a sense of, of gratitude and aliveness and appreciation for your body. And I'll be doing this in a, a modified practice that's known as open focus. I'll be inviting you to, to feel or imagine the space in the body or to feel the weight or the density and to let your attention move there and then simply to, in your own way, offer a sense of gratitude. So if you like, you can again close your eyes. Can you feel or imagine the space between your forehead and the back of your head? And 
Can you imagine this space filled with a sense of gratitude or appreciation? Can you feel or imagine the space inside the sinus cavities in your head? Can you feel or imagine the the volume or the weight of your tongue? Can you feel or imagine the space or the volume of your lips? Can you feel or imagine the space inside your throat? The space inside your mouth? Can you imagine the space inside your head and throat and filled with a sense of gratitude, appreciation, or metta? Is it possible to feel or imagine the weight or the volume of your right arm. Can you feel or imagine the space inside your right thumb? Can you feel or imagine the space between your right thumb and your right forefinger? Can you imagine the space in the palm of the right hand and fingers of the right hand? Is it possible to feel or imagine the weight or the volume of your left arm? Can you feel or imagine the space inside your left thumb? Can you feel or imagine the space inside the left palm and each of the fingers on the left hand? Can you feel or imagine the left and right arm, the palms, fingers, and thumbs filled with a sense of gratitude, appreciation, or metta?
Is it possible to feel or imagine the space between your breastbone and your spine? Can you feel or imagine the space between your navel and your spine? Can you feel or imagine the space between your navel and your pubic bone? Can you feel or imagine the space between your pubic bone and the tip of the coccyx, the tip of the tailbone. Can you imagine the space in the torso, the lower abdomen, and down through the floor of the pelvis, filled with a sense of gratitude, appreciation, and metta. Can you feel or imagine the space between the left hip joint and the right hip joint? Can you feel or imagine the weight or the volume or the length of your left leg. And can you feel or imagine the space of the volume of your left foot and toes. Can you feel or imagine the weight, and volume, and length of the right leg? Can you feel or imagine the space or the volume of the right foot and toes? And can you imagine your lower body the legs, 
feet and toes filled with a sense of gratitude or appreciation or metta. Is it possible to feel or imagine the space inside the left thumb while simultaneously feeling or imagining the space inside the right thumb? Can you imagine this perception of space as effortless? Is it possible to feel or imagine the space between your navel and your spine while simultaneously feeling or imagining the space between your forehead and the back of your head? Can you feel or imagine the space inside the body? Can you feel or imagine the space outside the body? Is it possible to imagine the space inside the body and the space outside the body as one vast, continuous space? Can you imagine the space filled with a sense of gratitude, appreciation, or metta? In these final minutes, in your own way, Resting in presence.
let all technique now drop away. Relax, feel. Thank you.